going to add in the uh, intro music later. Okay. So I'll just... So this is it? We're, we're I'll live? <laughs> yeah, let me do an intro and then we'll be... We'll do the thing. Okay. Hello. My name is Justin Comer. This is I Hear, I See Radio, episode 109. Uh, this is the first ever video episode of the show. So if you are a uh, I Hear, I See Patreon subscriber, you might be watching this in addition to listening. If you're not, you're probably just listening. Today, uh, we'll be talking with Carlos Catayo Solares. I'm going to read his bio real quick. Carlos Catayo Solares is a Spanish composer and performer currently living in Philadelphia. His work deals with subjects like quotation, the relationship between music and language, meter, and tempo polyphony, and improvisation. His pieces often focus on a single concept or technique that is interpreted in multiple ways. Should I read the whole thing? I think the whole thing is kind of too long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is the first time, this is like the first episode of a new era of I Hear, I See Radio. There's actually no radio involved. I'm just recording this at my house. And Carlos is at his house in Philadelphia. Uh, the show is about local music, usually. Uh, but as I mentioned, Carlos lives in Philadelphia he used to live here, and he used to uh, run I Hear, I See with me. So he's very, very close to the show. And last week when I released the short episode talking about what I wanted to do with the future of the show, uh, Carlos thought it would be funny if he was my first guest in the new, again, the new era of I Hear, I See Radio, because... He was on episode 108, and now he's on episode 109. It's back-to-back episodes with Carlos that are six months apart. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome back, Carlos. Uh, it's nice to have you back so soon, uh, right after your <laughs> your previous appearance. So what have you been up to for the last six months? Uh, <laughs> well, um... Yeah, I don't know. I was thinking about that in 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 preparation for the interview. Um I I mean it's yeah, it just feels crazy that like it was actually you, when you said that it was 6 months ago, I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Um Yeah, so I mean right after I was at Ahiro IC, which at that time I was actually in Iowa City. Mhm. Um I came back I think maybe like the day after there was a house show that I went to and that was the last show. <laughs> yeah. Um so yeah, I mean after that I don't know, I mean obviously there was a lot of just staying at home. Um Well, I I started making YouTube videos every week. Right. right. Um so that has been a pretty huge change. Um So yeah, for for people who don't know, um yeah, I'm basically just recording a short improvisation on video and audio and just posting on YouTube. Um they're about like 3 to 5 minutes. Mhm. Um Yeah, so that has been going on um i recently started teaching piano online oh yeah so that's been fun um i only have two students but and i mean obviously it's some stuff works better online some things don't work at all online um (laughs) so we're still trying to figure out like when and how we're going to go back in person um because the place where we were supposed to do the lessons in person is closing. Like permanently? Yeah. Oh. Uh, I mean, most likely. It's not like 100% sure, but yeah, it doesn't look good. Um, what else? Um, oh, Chris, Chris, my husband, and I. Um, Chris is my husband. It sounded like it was Chris, 
my husband <laughs> <laughs> <And> <laughs> the three of you um we started playing music pretty pretty regularly um he started practicing mandolin again so we've been playing a lot of mandolin and guitar stuff nice um yeah i mean that was great because like he's been the only person that i could play music with the whole time mm -hmm. um and what else i'm still i'm doing some projects um like long distance projects some some stuff with people in europe some stuff with tim um timothy david orm whom i've done you know a couple of videos with now um mm -hmm. and let me think oh yeah i also bought a bunch of stuff i guess <laughs> <laughs> like uh what kind of stuff like i mean instruments maybe but yeah we for for people with video i have now a baritone guitar that i will be using today okay cool cool it's seafoam green <laughs> <laughs> i think you've done a video with that yeah, already right I've, okay. I've, i think i've done a couple with it um let's see i oh well i traded a guitar um so i i traded this ibanez that i bought super cheap for a strat um and then oh yeah and then we bought a pedal steel <laughs> oh right yeah 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 have you done a Which video very with hard that? to play yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, those are cool uh, yeah yeah yeah. i mean it's, it's really fun and like once in a while you you figure something out that sounds like you can actually play so that's really cool. But for the most part, it's just kind of like, what, like how, I don't know. There's just, there's so many things that you can, there's, there's a lot of options, like with all the pedals and the levers. And then like, you can, of course, move the bar. Even if you know what chord you want to play, there's always like a lot of different places or a lot of different ways that you could get to that chord. Mm -hmm. um, so if you don't know anything, it's just really hard to like know which of those options you should use. I guess I don't really know what the pedals do on a pedal they, steel. Both the pedals and the and the levers, they're just changing the strings. Like they're either like pulling or pushing the strings. So that way you can so even without moving the bar, you can do different chords depending on the, the pedal combinations. So, oh. <laughs> I mean, the the way that I'm explaining to people is like, it's kind of like if your left hand was just a capo, uh -huh. and then your fingers are actually the pedals and the levers. Okay. So, without <laughs> moving the capo, you can change the chords the same way that on the guitar you can change your fingers to play different chords. Right. So, your your actual left hand... Yeah, it's like you're a playing capo. it is the capo. It's just a straight line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, it's really cool, but it's it's just super confusing. Yeah, it's complicated. <laughs> but they um, sound great. Oh yeah. Sorry. They sound great. They're a great yeah. instrument. Yeah, yeah. It's it's also cool. You actually don't tune it uh, temperate. You do something more like like just intonation. Like you tune it to an open chord, and then the the strings are not part of the open chord. You just tune it like on perfect fifths and perfect fourths and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um. So, which I don't. I mean, I haven't tried tuning it, tuning it to like just four forty everything. But everybody says that it sounds very bad. Yeah. So, um. <laughs> but yeah, I don't. I mean, it's just cool. Like sometimes you you do get some intervals where you can tell it's not. Depending on, I don't know, like sometimes you, you find combinations where it's not really in tune, but it gives it like a really nice sound um, compared to just like piano where it's like, it's it's always in tune, kind of. Yeah, it's supposed um, to be anyway. But everything is as much in tune or as much out of tune. While here, some things are very out of tune and some things are very in tune. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, so I don't know. I think 
Yeah, so I mean that's that's more like what I've been up to in terms of events or <laughs> yeah. Let's call it that. Yeah, um, we'll say your your musical activities, creative yeah. output. Uh and then yeah, I mean in terms of I mean, yeah, in 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 terms of like emotionally <laughs> what I've been up to <laughs> it's been kind of a mess. I mean, sometimes it's better. Uh sometimes it it really hits you like how bad everything is and then mm -hmm. it's just really dark <laughs> yeah so the place where you are teaching lessons is probably closing yeah uh anything else you know of in philadelphia that's going under because uh, of this yeah i mean i don't know in terms of venues yeah. i don't think i've heard anything I mean, I'm sure that something had to close. Um, there's definitely been like multiple restaurants, like even just nearby, mm -hmm. um, that have closed. Um, and yeah, I mean, and then like, yeah, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of friends that I have that were mainly freelancing, that's all gone. So, yeah. Um, and then a lot of these people, then their job is also like at a bar or at a store or something like that. So if the yeah. store closes, then they have to find something else. Um, so, yeah. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I'm lucky enough that like, because Chris's job has been super stable, like really money-wise, we're doing pretty much the same as before. Yeah, that's good. Um yeah, I, don't, I mean, it was mainly just, like, feeling like, so we, we moved to Philadelphia in June last year. Mm -hmm. So in March, it felt like things were finally, like, starting to click. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I had more people that I could play with. I started having some gigs. Um, And then, yeah, and then suddenly, like, it's it was all gone. And it's still gone. Yep. Um, so, so yeah, I, don't, I mean, it just felt like, like all the work that I have put into all that, like, like really pushing myself to like, try to go to a lot of concerts and try to really like talk to people and like, after meeting people, like get back to them and like, Hey, let's get a coffee. Let's do this. Hey, let's play together. I mean, I know in the long term it wasn't for nothing. It, yeah, it wasn't for nothing. Um, Your momentum, but, though. Yeah, I mean, but right now, it was just kind of like, okay. What? <laughs> um, I feel kind of the same. Like, January and February were, like, really good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and part of that was with you. Like, we, yeah. we played a bunch of Wombat stuff uh -huh. in, like, the immediate... Like right before everything shut down, yeah, and I felt like I was on a really nice upward swing, yeah. and then <laughs> we just had to stop everything. <laughs> I had three more uh, I Hear I See shows booked, mm -hmm. and those were going well. Like we were actually making money, yeah. And then we just had to cancel the rest of the season, mm -hmm. and I haven't done anything live since. Like, yeah. I barely leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've actually been pretty good with leaving the house. Like uh, at, the the past couple points, weeks. Yeah. At least I would like go out for like a walk or something. Mhm. Mm so I got better. Like the first couple months, yeah. I seriously like barely saw the sun. <laughs> <laughs> But um, then I, I started walking and stuff and yeah, yeah. felt a little um, bit more like a person again. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've slowly, like at least now, it feels like most people that I know, and I know that, I, that they're being like smart, um, we've started hanging out like outside and like at a good distance. Um mm -hmm. So, I mean, for now that the weather is nice, like, that's still doable. I'm pretty worried about the winter. Yeah. Because um, I don't think that by then things are really going to be better. 
No. Um, so, yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, it feels like we're just going to go back to not seeing anybody again. Um, and, yeah, I, don't, I mean, I've done some streaming stuff in terms of, like, live music, I guess. Yeah. Um, which is okay, but it's not... I don't know. I mean, it it just kind of feels like it's stuff that it's nice to have on top of having concerts. It doesn't replace them. No, not at yeah. all. Like, I mean, not, not, yeah, not even close. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, don't, I mean, I was talking with a, a friend who's also a musician about this and how... It's like it's not only I don't know, and I, I, I kind of feel like non musicians might not get this, like how bad this is for us. I mean I'm not not even just like ignoring all the, the financial stuff. But just socially, like so much of our interactions are at shows. Yeah. And and there's so many people that you actually don't even really hang out with outside of music stuff. Yeah, like that's pretty much my entire social yeah. life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but I mean, it's really like, I feel like for, for most of us, it's like that. Like, like the the vast minority of interactions that you have are actually with non-musicians. And then like 80% or higher is either you're hanging out with people to play with or you're hanging out with people that are also musicians and you're just hanging out. Um, or you just see people at concerts. Like, there's so many people that, like, you don't actually... I mean, I, could, I would consider them friends. But you never, like, meet for a coffee or something like that. And you don't even, like, arrange, like, oh, hey... Let's meet at this show. It's just people that you know you're going to run into because you right. go to the same stuff. Right. Um, so, like, out of all of that, pretty much the only thing that might be left is the people that you were hanging out anyway. Like, even if it's not for for playing or, or going to shows. Um, so, yeah, it's just such a huge difference. Um, because yeah I, I, that's the thing like I feel like for a lot of non-musicians they think like oh yeah it's so bad that there's no shows but they're thinking of it as I mean it sounds kind of bad but they're thinking of it as like consumers mm. Um, like I mean the same way that sometimes I might be like oh yeah it's it's too bad that like I can't go to watch a movie sure but that to me is just I get to go and watch a movie or like, or it's too bad that I can't go to like a restaurant and have a beer. Yes. I mean, that's annoying, but it's not <laughs> like it's too bad that I can't go and interact with people the way I was interacting with before. And, and there's really just no, I don't know. I mean, it just becomes such a huge part of, of your life that I, I just can't see any way of, of really replacing that. Yeah. Like that, I mentioned earlier, that was my, really my only social life. Yeah. Because that's how I've like arranged my life for the past yeah. several years. It's like, I put a bunch of work into making this show happen. And then that's where I see people. <laughs> 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 that's where I talk to people. That's where people remember that i exist <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh. uh yeah yeah um here um uptown bills they closed oh wow yeah uh Holy the God. mill the mill closed yeah. um there's people that are maybe going to try to keep it going as like a co-op or something but cool I don't yeah. really have super high <laughs> hopes for that. It's going to be hard to get anything to survive uh, however yeah. long <laughs> it lasts while we can't uh, gather inside. 
uh there's a new music venue in iowa city that opened like uh i think it was like july <laughs> the, oh since july <laughs> yeah like <laughs> really really bad timing <laughs> what where is it uh it's the old blue moose oh they opened a new wait, place so, in there oh yeah, yeah i forgot the blue moose closed yeah yeah mm-hmm. okay yeah i mean yeah it's a it's a cool place yeah they put a bunch of money into like fixing it up and then Hmm. this is like the worst possible time to be opening probably any business but especially a live music venue (laughs) they've been doing like uh like dance music and stuff there and you have to the the tables are really far apart and you have to have a mask on yeah. I still wouldn't do it. Like I <laughs> I don't really feel safe going inside a place and just hanging out. Yeah. yeah. But they're kind of put in the an impossible position. It's like you either put on events and put people at risk or you go under uh and the show like you either have a decent sized audience and people get sick or (laughs) you have no audience and you make no money and the business closes i don't know there's no there's no way to get through this because we don't have any Mm -hmm. real program in place to uh (laughs) to help people yeah 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 i don't know and i mean as i was saying like i don't feel like like my my hopes of the numbers like the 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 cases going down enough so that it feels controllable and we can do stuff is pretty much gone yeah um like by now it just feels like until we have a vaccine it's going to stay like this yes yeah i so the past few weeks uh i've been back at my regular job at the university and uh we've had a few in-person classes and it's every time i go to campus it's like this is scary (laughs) like i don't know what's gonna happen while i'm in town i don't yeah yeah, i haven't gotten sick yet but uh having in-person classes is just such a bad idea and i i think something like over 60 percent of university classes have gone online now anyway despite the their insistence on just powering through with in-person classes yeah yeah i don't know i mean i'm I'm very glad that i'm not a student i have to say <laughs> feels like i don't i mean especially like the people like our friends who are studying music it's just kind of like mm-hmm. what like what are your options do you do you pay full tuition for an online degree, basically? Or do you drop? Or, like, do you defer? But, I mean, like, with... Like, if you have financial aid or if you have a TA or something like that, you can't just say, hey, see ya. <laughs> right. Like, you're probably not going to get that back yeah. later if you drop mm-hmm. now. Yeah. So... Yeah, it sucks because it's like you're not going to have the education that you went into this like this this isn't the agreement that you signed up for yeah (laughs) i haven't been inside voxman but i've i've seen reports that it's uh not good to go in there (laughs) more (laughs) more dangerous than going to the grocery store is yeah what the studies say yep so (laughs) (laughs) Man, for whoever is listening to this, I don't know. <laughs> just <feels> like <laughs> just going like, yeah, things are bad. <laughs> that's that's basically it. that's life right now. It's like we just talk about how bad things are and how we don't have a lot of hope for them getting better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, I mean, yeah, I'm sure that eventually. I don't know. I'm hoping that. Maybe like in two years, I I go back to listen to this. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's actually how bad it was. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah. Um, uh, do you do you want to talk about your uh, weekly improvisations? Sure. 
Um, so you, maybe, you've done. Maybe I can play, and then we can go back to talking. Yeah, you can play something, and then we can talk about cool. the series. Yeah, let's do that. All okay. Right. Well, I'm going to need a second, so. Okay. You can edit this out. <laughs> maybe I might just leave it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Carlos has been doing a weekly improvisation on his YouTube. Um, and let's see, if you go to his website, which is cotayosolaris.com, and you go to the links page on there, his YouTube is at the very top. And actually, yeah, if you actually just go to the homepage of his website, there's a YouTube little button at the bottom. That's C-O-T-A-L-L-O-S-O-L-A-R-E-S dot com. Uh, and he's done 23 of these, so he's been at this for most of uh the lockdown period uh most of them he's playing guitar there's a uh, mostly electric there's a couple acoustic ones i think and then he also has a uh, violin there's one where he plays a five string bass uh there's an organ one that one's interesting uh one where he's just playing like samples on a max patch which is also a fun one i actually just watched all of these again the other night in preparation for carlos's appearance on this show so i kind of refreshed my memory of what he'd been up to and he's putting his headphones back on (laughs) (laughs) were you talking to me no i was uh just giving people the rundown of what you've been doing in the series and where they can find it Oh, wait, um, I think I might not be recording the guitar right now, so I need to change okay. that. Oh! Hmm. What's up? Well, it turns out that the my microphone was too loud, so the voice has been clipping once in oh. a while. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> when I send it to you, it's not too bad. Yeah, I'll work around it. And some of uh, Carlos's improvisations have incorporated uh, collaboration with other improvisers as well. And I'll be, I guess, asking him some questions about that after he plays what he's going to play here in a minute. And I think he's ready now. (laughs) Okay. There we go. All right. Thank you. 
All right, that was an improvisation from Carlos Cotaya Solaris, my guest for today's episode of I Hear I See Radio. He's an improviser, so that was all improvised. Uh, he was playing his baritone guitar, and I'll be asking him a little bit more about what gear he was using as soon as he's back on the mic. But It's going to take him a second to uh, move around his room. And he's swiveling back, and he is back to his microphone. Carlos. Hey. Hey. (laughs) (laughs) All right, that was your baritone guitar, right? Yes, that was my baritone guitar. Uh, And for those who don't know, what's the difference between a regular guitar and a baritone guitar? So baritone guitar still has six strings, um, Mm -hmm. but is tuned a fourth lower okay so the low Um, string standard tuning would be b yeah so it's b to b um i mean although it's it's not as set in stone as with a normal guitar like Mm -hmm. i guess in general like a a baritone guitar is somewhere in between a guitar and a bass yeah it's tuned lower it's longer um this one is not that much longer so it's actually pretty comfortable uh and it still fits in normal guitar bags which is very nice oh that's good (laughs) (laughs) um but yeah so yeah it's it's to be to be um yep so (laughs) So what else were you using for that uh, performance um mainly or maybe only actually the um, what's it called this is the line six um hx stomp um so it's cool because it does a lot of stuff but it's still pretty small so i can like mm-hmm. i don't know for a long time i felt like i had to choose between either i have a huge multi effects or i have uh individual pedals and this is a nice compromise because like it fits in the pedal board um so i can combine it with other stuff right and you use that a lot right like that's yeah. been on most yeah, yeah. of your um, weekly videos. Yeah, I mean it, it takes a little bit to I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's super flexible, but at the same time it's you you kind of have to decide what you're going to do. Um and then like make a preset and I mean even I I have I build a thing that is kind of like if instead of using the expression pedals inputs i just made like a tiny pedal that is like an expression pedal yeah um so with that you can change the parameters much faster and you you have a more tactile thing um but it's still like you need to decide this knob is gonna do this one thing or or this bunch of things but then it's kind of hard to change it Um, right yeah it's a it's a multi-effects thing yeah um but yeah like what i'm trying to say is that like it it feels like with the pedals is more like if at any point i'm like oh i want to change this it's right there while with this is like i need to do the job the work in advance and then once in i'm in the middle of my presentation it's like well this is this is what this knob does right now yeah (laughs) you'd halt the uh progress of your performance if you wanted to change yeah yeah if suddenly you were like oh "Mm." (laughs) yeah I wish I had this other thing or yeah. Um <laughs> but yeah, I mean still it's it's super useful. Um yeah, it's probably like the last the last thing I bought for the pedal board and I'm I'm very happy with it. Good. Yeah. I've yeah. seen that it shows up in your list of gear on most yeah. of your improvisation <laughs> videos, so it's getting a lot of use. Yeah. So uh when did you start doing this? Um so I was checking yesterday. I I started recording in April. Okay. But I might not have started uploading until maybe like the end of April. Yeah. Um, the first one, it says it was uploaded five months ago. So probably like mid-April. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. Because I mean, I was, I was pretty good at... Um, being very ahead of schedule so the the goal was to always have four videos ready at any point 
Um, right now, I've not been very good at that. Um, like, I, I don't know. I took a break and then I had an ear infection. So that also kind of like zoomed me down. Right. Uh, yeah. So right now, right now, it's pretty much like I, I make the video and then the same week it goes up. Um, right. Like today, I'm going to try to finish a video that will go up on Monday. So. Yeah, um, so you're only a couple days ahead now instead of a month. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, yeah, but, I mean, it's been, like, I, I mean, when I think about it, like, the the last one that I uploaded was number 23. Yes. And this is once a week, so, I mean, that's, that's pretty crazy. Um, yeah, you're getting close know, to six months. What? You're getting close to six months. Yeah. Um... I mean, I don't really know how long I'm going to keep doing this. Mm-hmm. Um, Because it's this weird balance between... Because of the schedule, it kind of feels like a chore. But at the same time, it forces me to do something. Yeah. Um, Like, I don't feel like if I was not doing this, I would be using that time to do something else. Right. <laughs> um, It feels like I can do other stuff and keep doing this um they're pretty short videos so yeah yeah it hopefully doesn't take too much of your week yeah i I mean (laughs) (laughs) i don't know it 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 takes a surprising amount of time um like i don't know i kind of decided at first that like i didn't want to just record them all with the same camera angle in the same place okay so there's been a lot of like trying to figure out how to make different parts of the apartment to work Mm -hmm. um yeah like in the fourth one that was your first one with the acoustic guitar yeah you moved to the kitchen yeah Yeah. (laughs) there's there's been a couple now in the kitchen yeah um but yeah so i mean it there's always a lot of just like moving stuff around so it's at least like a good hour of like trying to figure out like where i'm gonna do it and then move everything um so although although the apartment might look pretty good in the in the video, <laughs> usually everything that is not being shown is just like filled with everything that I had to move. Yeah, you just push it behind the camera. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, and then usually, I mean, most of the videos where you're seeing is not the first take. Right. I was gonna ask that next, yeah. like how much yeah, you yeah, actually yeah. record it's, it's... per video. Yeah, so I mean, it's kind of like, usually it's like, I I might have an idea, um, but yeah, a lot of the times it's just like I start messing around, and then I find something that I like, and then maybe I do it a couple of times, and then I start recording, and I just kind of like keep doing it until I get the the version that, I, that I'm happy with. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't I mean I feel like I used to do more takes and now it's more like I I have a stronger idea. So that by the time that I'm recording I'm pretty sure what I'm doing. Um so it might only be like the first or the second or third take or so. Um But yeah, I don't I mean it's been really good. Like I I feel like I even even when I could improvise with people, I didn't really have any like routine to practice improvising yeah um so this has kind of done that yeah that's Um, smart because i i don't really i mean i haven't practiced anything in like months now but yeah (laughs) i i don't really practice improvisation much either it's mostly just like in the moment like i unless i haven't played in a long time like now like if i was if i were to book a gig now i'd probably practice before i went Mm -hmm. (laughs) but usually it's just like as long as my chops are in decent shape i just i'd wait till the performance until i like think about it (laughs) yeah i think for me it's it's been more like especially i had a solo set um i think it was maybe like in this Maybe in December uh, or January or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And and actually, the person organizing the concert, she was like, "You have forty five minutes. You can do whatever you want." So, and that was that was basically like my first solo set ever. Yeah. So forty five minutes is a long, long time to fill. I mean, as <laughs> as an improviser, like I've I've done the Black Stork stuff. Yeah. Right. Before. Um. So so yeah so there I. I realized pretty strongly that. With my setup, if I'm alone, I need to, I need to do some planning in advance, um, or I need to get to the point where like I know my setup so well that like I I can find ways of getting out of, of situations where I, where it's kind of hard to get out of it. Yeah. Um, because especially with the with, because I'm using my hands for the pedal board, and I'm using my hands to play guitar. Mm-hmm. Um, there's times when like if if I'm using both hands and I'm kind of like stuck on that sound and I, I just can't change the, I mean, I've done stuff with like, I've used my elbows to press the pedal. <laughs> yeah. Like if, if you really have to, um, but yeah, I, I, I felt like the, the weekly stuff really helps me half just kind of like blocks where like I can, I can take that back if I need to. Like I can remember, like, oh yeah, there was there was this video where I started with this and then I went out with this. Um, yeah, you're getting more so, acquainted with your equipment and yeah, yeah, spending I mean, or, more or time. Just, just have like a like a more ready um, vocabulary of mm-hmm. paths that I can take in a way. Yeah, and it's the transitional stuff that like yeah. needs the most. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cause, and, and usually if I'm playing with other people, it, it's not a problem because I can just stop playing for a moment. Yeah, I can cover you up yeah. while you're adjusting. Uh, like you just have yeah. to find your way out and then that's fine. But if you've been playing for two minutes and then you're stuck with something, you're like, well, I can't stop because it's too <laughs> short. Um, yeah. But I can't really... Yeah, <laughs> I need to keep playing. <laughs> yeah, I played a solo set in december also and the way that i got around that because i i i was improvising but also i had like set uh songs like okay throughout and but i wanted it to just be a continuous thing without any breaks so i just uh i have a you know my clock radio stuff yeah Mm -hmm. i have one that has a headphone jack so i just plug that into my setup and then I could just turn the radio on <laughs> <laughs> while I was adjusting other stuff. And if I, I if yeah. I can just keep one hand on the radio and like move the knobs around, then that yeah. keeps the the interest. Like there's still something moving around while I'm using my other hand to like change my samples or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I've thought about maybe like pre recording some textures or something and then having that like on a loop pedal so i can mm. trigger that if if i really need to yeah um but i don't know i mean it, it yeah I, i'm kind of trying to get a get to a point where i don't need to do that um but yeah so i don't know yeah i, I really don't know how long i'm going to to keep doing the videos i mean i could see especially visually they have changed a lot um they used yeah, to be Yeah, you're very you're getting a little like this is me playing. Yeah, you're getting now, a little more experimental with the effects. Yeah, yeah, now pretty much all of them is just like it it kind of looks completely different from the last one. Um <laughs> So well, how much had you done with like video editing prior to this? Nothing. So it's I mean, an opportunity like, to learn that stuff too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and even just like video like just figuring out because like i don't have lights or anything so a lot of it is just like okay how you start noticing like well if i'm playing in front of this and i'm really close to it then it just kind of like like then the the shot has like no depth whatsoever um so yeah so a lot of it has been and i kind of thought that it was gonna go more in that direction like maybe even eventually buying lights yeah but now that is going more into like I'm just gonna record something and then just add a bunch of effects on it. 
it feels like that's that's more where it's at um and yeah but i mean a lot of yeah i, I definitely have to learn a lot, a lot of stuff and and i'm still i mean eventually i should buy a better camera what like are you using that now i'm using is the some like camcorder that my sister had and she never used mm-hmm. <laughs> um it's so, definitely serviceable yeah. so far say that again it's definitely serviceable so far yeah. like the videos yeah, look yeah. fine it looks fine i mean it's it's not like it's, they're not shots where you're like whoa that looks <laughs> awesome <laughs> <laughs> what you need you need like a camera dolly and then you yeah. can do like cool like swooping shots <laughs> while you're flying <laughs> yeah i need to buy oh, you a could, drone yes exactly and- you can get a drone <laughs> And, like, have it hovering outside your window. <laughs> and then, well, then you probably need, like, Chris to run the camera. But yeah, 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 you can be playing and then have the drone fly into your apartment. <laughs> film you, sort of go around you in a circle, and then leave the apartment again. Yep. And there's a cool kind of, <laughs> like, bookend form to the video. <laughs> So yeah, if if you're listening to this and you're in Philadelphia and you have a drone, let mm-hmm. me know. <laughs> Carlos will send you his address and you can just fly the drone yeah, over. Yeah. <laughs> you can we can do a social distance drone shoot. <laughs> uh so you mentioned um playing with other people and how yeah. it's different. Like you're learning more about how you want to improvise alone for solo mm-hmm. performances. But some of these videos you have been collaborating with other improvisers. Uh, so I guess I'll just start with the first one, Pete Dennis, the bassist. Oh, okay, we're just, we're just going to go down the list. Let's talk about these people. Yeah, why not? Yeah, um, so Pete is, I mean, some of these people actually are going to overlap with what we did in the last episode where we were talking about yeah, right. people in Philly. Yeah, so Pete, actually, one of the things was him with a band. Um. So Pete is a bassist. He finished school maybe like one or two years ago. Uh, Temple. Um, yeah, so I mean, Pete is definitely one of the people that was mostly affected by, like, because I mean, he's he's just freelancing, and then he had a job at a store. Yeah. Um, but I mean, Pete is the kind of person where, like, since he's a teenager, he's been playing gigs every week um so so yeah so he actually had like i mean within two days suddenly a a huge chunk of his income was canceled yeah um and i mean this was still when we were thinking like oh well maybe by the end of june (laughs) yeah maybe this will just be like a month yeah yeah like, um, do you remember, like, at the very beginning when people thought it was going to be, like, two weeks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, so, yeah, and Pete was the, one of the first people that I just email, like, hey, do you want to send me a video? Um, yeah, I was going to ask about the process. So he recorded an yeah. improvisation video, and then you just added to it. Yeah, they've, they've all been like that. Okay. I I mean I guess we could do streaming, but then streaming for for coordination is not very good. Like you're no. always going to have some lag. Yeah, you won't be in sync. Yeah. Um, which is fine also, for a lot of improvisation, yeah. but it's I mean, also it, it, weird. It works for some stuff. Like I yeah. on Monday, no, sorry, Tuesday this week. Um, I did a stream with Jeffrey Young, who's also one of the people in the in the list. Yeah, he's the violinist. Um, and I mean, for the stuff that we were doing, it was fine because he was all very spacey and very moody, so there's no, there's no yeah. like cuts or anything. The problem um, is that it kind of yeah. forces you to play that kind of music because Wait, you won't. Again? The problem is that the streaming kind of forces you to play music yeah. like that because mm-hmm. you know you're not in sync, yeah. So it does eliminate a lot of uh potential, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, and also like the way that I'm approaching the improvisations since it's, since it's not 
purely just like let's record this and let's see what happens but it's a little bit more like okay here's the idea i'm gonna do it a couple of times until i i get it the way i want it yeah it feels like it makes more sense for people to send me something that then i can try it a couple of times or i mean or, or even just like watch it a couple of times and think okay at this point this happens i want to do this or that mm-hmm. um so yeah so there was pete jeff uh is the the violinist um he i don't know i mean yeah he does all kind of stuff um He's now in Philadelphia. He used to be in New York. Um, he's part of uh, an ensemble called Thin New York. Mm-hmm. Um, he used to be in a... I guess they called it like a cabaret punk band or something like that. Like Dresden um, Dolls or something? <laughs> what? Like the Dresden Dolls? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, it's this is kind of like, kind of like folk punk... Yeah, I don't know. Well, that's cool. I like that yeah. kind of music. Yeah, yeah. No, they sound really good. Um, and yeah, and with with Jeff, we've done two strings now for different things. Um, I don't know. It's funny because like the music that we play together, especially when when he's doing violin and electronics and I'm doing guitar and electronics, it's turned almost into this like sci-fi. <laughs> nice vibe <laughs> where. I don't know. It's just very spacey. I'm very, I don't. I mean, kind of cheesy, but I'm I'm having fun with that too. Yeah, that's that's fine. Yeah, I yeah. really liked the video you did with him. It was very like hardcore. Yeah, just, the the uh, video is completely uh, different. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's super dry and super aggressive. <laughs> yeah. And you're playing a five string bass on that yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. So it's very low and yeah, yeah. Bleh, bleh, that kind of sound. <laughs> Um, and then who else has been there? Um, oh yeah, Adam, Adam Vidixis. Um, I like that one a lot too. He's yeah, a yeah, drummer. Adam's great. Um, Adam actually teaches at uh, Temple University. Um, so yeah, he's a percussionist, composer. Yeah, does a lot of like music technology stuff. Um, and yeah, that was really fun because actually with Adam, like he's just really busy. So like I. I used to see him once every couple of months, like we were running to each other at something. Mm-hmm. Um, and now suddenly we both had a lot of time, so we could actually <laughs> do this. Yeah. Um, then who else has been there? Um, Christine has been there. Christine Burke. Mm-hmm. Which, good, good friend of the show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've got... Uh... There's one with me, one with Gabby Vanek, and one oh, with Christine right. yeah, Burke. Yeah, yeah. So that that's like your the I hear I see yeah. crossover Best, with yeah, your yeah. series. Uh pretty cool. I hear I see all stars. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, uh yeah, the Christine one, she's um playing her accordion. Yeah. Just kind of drony. Um and it's very Twin Peaks themed. <laughs> Have we ever talked about Twin Peaks? You, so you told me, actually last time that we were hanging out, I hadn't seen any of it. Okay, yeah, because I, I didn't think you had, yeah, but yeah, then yeah. that video and was very since referential. Then, Chris and I have watched like almost all of it, but then we kind of stopped. So I still haven't finished it. Where did you stop? Kind of like halfway through the second season. Second season, okay. So you're not quite done with the original run yet? No, no, no. Yeah, and we haven't seen the... I don't know when, if ever, we'll see the, the new stuff because that's not on Netflix and that's all we have. Um, I may be but, able to provide for you. <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> I may be able to provide for you. Okay, good. Because <laughs> it's yeah. really good. Like, I would want okay. you to see cool. it. Because, I mean, for me, the second season was very disappointing (laughs) (laughs) yeah the middle section of it is like where it gets into just pointless (laughs) yeah like i don't know the the first season is just such a weird balance between things that you feel like should not go together um because like it's so what i was expecting was just 
full on weird David Lynch stuff. Yeah. And there's some of that. Mm -hmm. But then you you told me, you and Ashley told me that it's actually very soap opera. Yeah. Which it is. Yeah. Um <laughs> And then it's also just like really funny. Like there's just a lot of just like super dumb goofy stuff. Um so the the tone of the show makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah, it's all over the place. But it really very... works somehow. Like it's mm -hmm. it's just really fun to watch. Like you just don't know how what way is it gonna go. Like is this episode going to be more like just like holy shit? <laughs> what this like people speaking backwards? Yeah, the um, juxtaposition is really what makes. Yeah, it... yeah, yeah. And then suddenly this this it switches to some like super melodramatic thing where like the music is super cheesy and people are like yelling at each other and stuff like that and, <laughs> and then suddenly i don't know there's a scene where there's a llama and it mm -hmm. just passes by i don't know yeah um, there's the high school drama and then there's like yeah fbi internal yeah. uh <laughs> affairs uh <laughs> and then um, just like dream sequences that just yeah. are insane like yeah, yeah <laughs> make yeah. no sense at all um so yeah i really like the first season and then the the beginning of the second season is fine like until you really finish like all the the open threads yes once they solve the like yeah. central yeah after that theme. i'm it's it's been kind of a drag like you're still watching it's like i don't care about anything now <laughs> yeah like the what I've heard is that the network kind of forced them to like solve the mystery yeah. before they wanted to. So they just kind of spin their wheels for a while after that. And yeah, it's yeah. like, well, and the thing is like in the second season, David Lynch and um, the other main guy, they're not even there. Right. So it's like, it's a pretty different team at that point. Uh, Mark Frost, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's yeah, the other yeah, guy. Yeah. Um, well, they uh, Lynch at least. I don't know if Mark Frost came back, but I know Lynch directs the last episode of season two. Oh, okay, okay. But, yeah. It gets better, like right at the okay. end. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, I, I guess we should we should just push through it. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, the fact that the the one with Christine is kind of like Twin Peaks theme. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how much she wanted it because she's playing with an owl <laughs> lamp in the background, which is very on the nose. Right. Um, and then, yeah, I just kind of went with it. Um, so that uh, wasn't her yeah. idea. You kind of yeah, ran yeah, yeah. away with that. Okay. I mean, I know that Christine also likes it. So yeah. it was just kind of like, okay, let's let's do this. Yeah. Well, and she's got that zigzag uh -huh. pattern on her accordion. So yeah. visually, like... It, it makes sense for you to go yeah. in that direction. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, the one with Gabby was really fun because what she sent me was already so dense. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it was a it was a good challenge of like, okay, what can I do with this that is not just... I mean, and there there is one point where it's like, I'm just going to play one high note. I'm just going to stay there. <laughs> yeah, I guess like register is how you can kind of like pierce yeah the, but the thing uh, is the like wall. what she's doing is already so full frequency that it's hard to like <laughs> find a pocket there where you can do anything um, yeah she can she can really fill up the spectrum yeah um and then yeah the one with you was you already had done the the radio stuff that i really liked so i asked you if, if i could use one of those mm -hmm. um and then was the the one with Javi was one of the last ones? Yes. Um, yeah, Javi is like my best friend in Spain. Like we, like when we met, I was seven and he was nine. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> really long. Um, and yeah, we met because we were both having lessons at the same place, in violin, both of us. Um, and then yeah, we're just yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's one of those things where like. Your life completely changes, but it still goes well. Yeah, with that's each good. other, so <laughs> you <just> stay <laughs> being friends. Yeah, and um, he's still in Spain. Yeah, he's in Madrid. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, he does a lot of like session work and like music for ads and stuff like that. Um, Great. Or he's just kind of like a like a side man for 
I don't know. He was doing a lot of stuff with a singer songwriter. Um, and then also he writes some of his own music, and he, yeah, he's he's. I mean, he's doing very well on YouTube. Like he's done some covers that have like thousands, thousands of views. Nice. Um, like he actually makes some money on YouTube. So <laughs> yeah, which is very difficult to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I don't know. I'm. Am I forgetting anything else? I think you mentioned everyone. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If if I forgot you, I'm very very sorry. <laughs> um, no. Every every uh every collaborator was okay. mentioned. Cool. I did. Um. So your ninth video. That's the one where you just do the max patch with the cord oh, yeah, yeah, controller. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that was just a voicemail that you got. I. I remember getting that voicemail at some point, but I didn't have it saved. So I actually found somebody okay. who had recorded it. <laughs> yeah, that was actually exactly what I was wondering, if you had like yeah, found yeah. it online or if it was your own. <laughs> I, I have some voicemails that I have saved because mm-hmm. I regularly get robocallers who I think are speaking Chinese. Oh wow! Yeah, I don't really get those, but I've heard I, about that. I get them uh, like every week. That trend. Yeah. Um. So I have some of those saved. Maybe someday I'll do something with. It. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I we haven't released this yet, uh, because the coronavirus shut down everything, and we kind of just put it on the back burner. But uh, the stuff I'm working on with Jason Palomara and Brian oh, Pankrot, yeah. uh, we're each. Like, we recorded a bunch of improvisation stuff last summer, and then we were each working on, like, our own set of music derived from those recordings. And mine, I have one, actually two tracks, I think, that are very much, like, combining those improvisations with voicemails that I received. So I <laughs> I was uh, excited to see that you'd done something similar. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Um. Yeah. So. I don't know. Yeah, and I I still have. I have two things from other people. One one is the one that will come on Monday. And then the other one will come out. Two weeks after, but I'm I already recorded my part, so. Um. We'll see. Yeah. Um, so you release these every Monday. Yeah. That's the Every schedule. Monday. So the, there's a preview on Sunday that goes up on Facebook and Instagram. And then on Monday, it goes up on YouTube. Okay, great. Yeah. I'll make sure to link all of this stuff uh, <laughs> okay. wherever wherever you, the listener, are experiencing this uh, podcast today. I, I think we've been going for a little over an hour now. So yeah. I think, I think we've... I was thinking maybe, maybe I can do another short thing and then we can finish with that sure okay. yeah if you if you want to cool. play again uh and then we'll we'll end it after that so yeah. uh is there anything aside from your website that you want people to know about um i think yeah i mean most of my stuff like if if you most of my stuff you can find through my website um and probably the place where I post the most just like work stuff will be Instagram. Um, okay. So yeah, I mean, I would say like if, if you follow me on Instagram, you should probably, you'll probably know about most stuff that is happening. Um, yeah, otherwise, I don't think... Oh, well, I guess today I wrote a, a short piece for a read quintet. Um that is going up on YouTube today. I think at like four or something. So okay. by the time that you, the listener, hear this, this probably that will be available. <laughs> <He's up there. laughs> um, so yeah, they're called the. I I don't really know how they pronounce it. I would say the Civita Solis or Civita Solis. I don't know. Um, anyway, it's C I V I T A S O L I S. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Requinted. Um, so yeah, they've been doing. They did like a call for miniatures. Um, so I think it's every week they're posting one 
uh, they're recording all separate. Um, so it's very, very COVID theme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm very happy with the way it turned out. Um, especially because it was such a, it was like, well, I'm not doing anything else, so I might as well just write a miniature for requinted in like a week. <laughs> yeah. Why not? <laughs> and you got time. There's a recording. So that was, yeah, that was a good use of my free time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's an, you got a quick yeah. turnaround as well. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, okay, well, so should we say goodbye now and then oh, play something? Yeah, or? let's say we'll say goodbye to each other, and then while you're setting up, I'll do like the ending okay. spiel of Sounds the good. show. Okay, so <laughs> Carlos, it was nice uh, talking to you this morning. Yeah, yeah. Thanks Great for, as always. Uh, thanks for coming on. I miss on. you very much. Yeah, I miss you too. Yeah, say hi to Ashley. <laughs> I will. Um, she's she's in the next room, so after okay. this, I will. I would say say hi to your cats, but your cats don't really go me. So. <laughs> Sorry. I, I'll tell them I saw you, but <laughs> they won't care that much. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Hopefully, we'll get to see each other in person. Someday. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe after the winter or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Yeah, get out of the house. <laughs> I I will on Sunday for sure, if not before that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, and yeah, thanks to everybody who listened. Um sorry if we went too long. Um yeah. No, nah, there's there's no format restrictions anymore. We're not on the radio, so yeah. <laughs> we can just talk as long as we're still interested. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I always feel interesting. That's the question. <laughs> yeah. This is more about us than them, so it's... <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You you heard it here first. This is all just mas- masturbatory That's right. <laughs> radio. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I'm going to get ready. And all right. Play so, while Carlos is setting up, uh, listeners, if you haven't... If you're not uh, familiar with everything that I Hear I See has to offer, you can check out the website. It's IHearIC.com. That's I-H-E-A-R-I-C dot C-O-M. Uh, links to all the social media stuff there. Um, obviously, we're not booking live shows right now. And that was kind of our main thing. So I'm kind of like, you know, finding other stuff to do to fill that gap because we can't see each other in person. Uh, if you would like to support the continued existence of this show, we do have a Patreon page, patreon.com slash I hear I see. For as little as $1 per month, you can have all of the extra bonus stuff that isn't available for free to the public. Uh, for example, two days ago on Wednesday, I posted... Uh, a video collaboration between Carlos and myself. I had Carlos uh, record an improvisation, and then I put some video effects over it, and the I Hear I See Patreon subscribers get exclusive early access to that video, and then it'll be available to the public next Wednesday. And uh, going forward, every episode of I Hear I See Radio will have some sort of video component uh, until perhaps I can actually go back on the actual terrestrial radio. And I hear I see Patreon subscribers will have exclusive access to the video version of every episode. So, uh, Carlos, how you doing over there? Ready? Okay. So, we're going to let Carlos play us out now. Uh, make sure you check out his website. Again, it's cotayosolaris.com, and I will link it everywhere that this episode is posted for you as well. All right, Carlos, play us out.